Satan was once a beautiful, powerful angel in heaven. His name then was Lucifer, which means, son of the morning, or, shining one, son of the dawn. His position in heaven, his beauty, power, and final end, are well described in Ezekiel 28 12-19. Lucifer, or Satan, is, next to God and Christ, the wisest being in the universe, for God said, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom. Verse 12. He was a very beautiful being, for the text says he was perfect in beauty. Verse 12. He has been in the Eden home of Adam and Eve. Thou hast been in the garden of God. Verse 13. He was a great musician, and doubtless led the music and singing of the hosts of angels in their morning and evening songs of praise to God. Verse 13 says, The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. The above text shows that he was created by the power of God. All the angels were created full-grown, and not born as children. Hence this text is describing some heavenly being. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Verse 14. Lucifer's position was by the throne of God, with his wings outstretched above it. The ark built by Moses was a type of heavenly things. On the top of this ark were two cherubim with their wings covering the ark where the glory of God rested. See Exodus 25 20. This represents Lucifer's position as covering cherub, close to the throne of God in heaven. Lucifer was the anointed cherub. Anciently the prophets of the Lord anointed the kings to show that they were appointed of God to govern and command. Lucifer was, next to the Son of God, the anointed commander of the hosts of heavenly angels. Prince of the power of the air. All his wisdom, beauty, power, and position were given him by God who had created him. The Creator fitted him for the work he wished him to do, and the place he desired him to occupy. Lucifer owed everything which he possessed to his Lord. But, like some people who have riches and power, he become proud of his glory. He forgot that it was all the gift of God. The text says, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. As. 28 17. The Son of God was above him, and equal with his Father. Lucifer was second to Christ, but, considering his beauty and power, he decided that he ought to be equal with God. The prophet Isaiah says of him, Thou hast said in thine heart, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will be like the Most High. Chapter 14 13, 14. But Jehovah could not permit this. The very thought of it by Lucifer was sin, for it was pride and the exaltation of self. Only the Son of God could be equal with the Father. Then rebellion came into the heart of Lucifer. He went among the angels and told his story. They loved him as their leader, and many took sides with him. The loyalty of all the angels was tested. Nearly one-third their number took sides with Lucifer. Then there was open rebellion in heaven. Lucifer had a vast army at his command, and he felt strong enough to defy God. But rebellion could not be allowed in heaven. The rebel host must be disposed of in some way. God could destroy them at once for if he could create them he could also destroy them. But Lucifer had charged God with being partial and severe, and claimed that the laws of Jehovah were not needed in heaven. So God allowed the rebellion to develop and do its work, that all the universe might see the awful results of sin, and the final fate of sinners. This will be an object lesson through all eternity. Note. The 28th chapter of Ezekiel tells of the overthrow of the prince of Tyrus or the city of Tyre, which was a very strong, wealthy, proud, and wicked city on the Mediterranean Sea, near Palestine. But by reading verses 12 to 15, it will be seen that this chapter has a double application, and that these verses refer more especially to some being standing at one time in a high position in heaven. It shows him to have been very wise, beautiful, and powerful, and near the presence of the Almighty God. Such a description can apply only to Lucifer, now known as the devil, and Satan, described in the accompanying lesson. The Bible is full of object lessons, and kingdoms, men, 
and events are often taken to teach important lessons. Christ did much of his teaching by parables. He took things as he found them in the world to illustrate and mock forcible great gospel truths. In this chapter the power and beauty, the pride and wickedness, and the final overthrow of Tyre were taken to represent the high position of Lucifer in heaven, his sin of pride and rebellion, and his final fall. Satan, Prince of Darkness Lucifer and his angels had become God's enemies, or rebels against his government. They could not be allowed to remain in heaven. The Son was appointed by the Father to take command of the true angels, and drive out the rebel host. Lucifer took command of the angels who had rebelled with him, and was determined to hold his place in heaven. Then there was war in heaven, Michael, Christ, and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Revelation 12-7 When Lucifer sinned and fell, his character and work were so changed that the beautiful name he had in heaven was also changed. In Revelation 12:9, he is called the dragon, that old serpent, the devil, and Satan. Of course Satan could not win in such a warfare. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 12:9. In Isaiah 14:12, we read, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? Christ refers to this when he said to his disciples, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Luke 10:18. When Satan knew that he had lost heaven forever, his heart was filled with anger and hatred for all that was good. His history since then shows that from that time his motto was, Evil, be thou my good. Revenge filled his heart in which the love of God once abode and all his wonderful powers were turned against God and his work. Every artful device of evil angels has been used since then to lead men to follow them in sin and rebellion against God. It is well for man to know the strength of the foe he has to meet. Satan and his angels have on earth the same wisdom which they had in heaven before their fall. To this is added six thousand years of experience in their awful work. In heaven Satan's influence was so great that he was able to deceive and lead into rebellion the angels. His power to deceive man is very great. With such power and influence at his command, we can never overcome the devil in our own strength. When we let go our hold upon God we go on to the enemy's ground, and are taken captive by him at his will. 2 Timothy 2:26. But Christ has twice conquered this foe once in the great battle in heaven when Satan was cast out, and again as a man on earth when he met all his temptations and came off victorious. Hence Satan is to Christ a conquered foe. If we trust our Lord fully he will give us strength in every hour of need, and thus we may become more than conquerors through him that loved us. Romans 8:37. Paul calls Satan the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 2:2. He it is who causes the terrible cyclones, the tidal waves, and other awful disasters. Not only the restraining hand of God prevents him from bringing destruction to the world more awful than it has yet known. In Hebrews 2:14, we learn that the devil has the power of death. This is so because sin brought death, and Satan is the author of sin. He claims all who die as his. Only the power of God can bring them from the land of the enemy at the resurrection. But some glad day. Sin and death and Satan will be destroyed. Paul declared that Christ, by his death, opened the way by which he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Hebrews 2:14. The Lord says through the prophet Ezekiel, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Ezekiel 28 18, 19. Then, with the stain of sin entirely removed, God will have a clean universe, as free from sin as it was before rebellion entered heaven.